Section 14 of Astounding Stories, April 4th, 1930. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Reader's Corner. Our Thanks. Three months ago, the Clayton Magazines presented to lovers of science fiction everywhere a new magazine with a brand new policy, Astounding Stories. And now it is the editor's great pleasure to announce to our thousands of friends that this new magazine is enjoying a splendid success. Within 24 hours of the time that Astounding Stories was released for sale, letters of praise began pouring into our office, and this is significant many of them clearly revealed that their writers had grasped the essential difference of the new science fiction magazine over the others we cannot better state this difference this improvement than by quoting what the reader whose letter appears under the caption and kind to their grandmothers says in his very first paragraph and i was still more pleased and surprised to find that the editor seems to know that such stories should have real story interest besides a scientific idea it is exactly that every story that appears in astounding stories not only must contain some of the forecasted scientific achievements of tomorrow but must be told vividly excitingly with all the human interest that goes to make any story enjoyable today the editor and staff of Astounding Stories express their sincere thanks to all who have contributed to our splendid start, especially to those who had the kindness to write in with their helpful criticism. Already one of your common suggestions has been taken up and embodied in our magazine, and so we have this new department, the Reader's Corner, which from now on will be an informal meeting place for all readers of Astounding Stories. We want you never to forget that a cordial and perpetual invitation is extended to you to write in and talk over with all of us anything of interest you may have to say in connection with our magazine. If you can toss in a word of praise, that's fine. If only criticism, we'll welcome that just as much, for we may be able to find from it a way to improve our magazine. If you have your own private theory of how airplanes will be run in 2500, or if you think the real fourth dimension is different from what it is sometimes described, write in and share your views with all of us. This department is all yours, and the job of running it and making it interesting is largely up to you. So, come over in the reader's corner and have your share in what everyone will be saying. The Editor and kind to their grandmothers. Dear Editor, I received a pleasant surprise a few days ago when I found a new science fiction magazine at the newsstand, Astounding Stories, and I was still more pleased and surprised to find that the editor seems to know that such stories should have real story interest besides a scientific idea. Of course, I took with a grain of salt the invitation to write to the editor and give my preference of the kind of stories I like. I know that every editor, down in his heart, thinks his magazine is perfect, as is. In fact, praise is what they want, not suggestions, judging by the letters they print. Well, I can conscientiously give you some praise. If astounding stories keep up to the standard of the first issue, it will be all right. Evidently, you can afford to hire the best writers obtainable. Notice you've signed up some of my favorites, Murray Leinster, R. F. Starzl, Ray Cummings. I like their stuff because it has the rare quality, rather vaguely described as distinction, which make the story remembered for a long time. The story Tanks by Murray Leinster is my idea of what such a story should be. The author does not start out, Listen, my children, and you shall hear a story so wonderful you won't believe it. Only after the death of Professor Bulging Dome do I dare to make it public to a doubting world. No, he simply proceeds to tell the story. If I were reading it in the Saturday Evening Post or Ladies' Home Journal, it would be all right to prepare me for the story by explaining that, 
Of course, the author does not vouch for the story, it having been told to him by a crazy Eurasian in a cottage grove black and tan speakeasy at 3.30 a.m. In Astounding Stories, I expect the story to be unusual, so don't bother telling me it is so. That criticism applies to Phantoms of Reality, which is a story above the average, though despite its rather flat title and slow beginning. Here's another good point about tanks. Its characters are human. Some authors of stories of the future make their characters all brains, cold monsters with no humanity in them. Such a story has neither human interest nor plausibility. The sky's the limit, I say, for mechanical or scientific accomplishments, but human emotions will be the same a thousand years from now. And even supposing that they will be changed, your readers have present-day emotions. The magazine cannot prosper unless those present-day emotions are aroused and mirrored by thoroughly human characters. The situation may be just as outré as you like, the more unusual the better, but it is the response of normal human emotions to most unusual situations that gives a magazine such as yours its powerful and unique kick. The response of the two infantrymen and tanks to the strange and terrifying new warfare of the future exemplifies another point I would like to make. The fact that no matter what marvels the future may bring, the people who will live then will take them in a matter-of-fact way. Their conversation will be cigarettes, sag paste, drinks, women. References to the scientific marvels around them will be casual and sketchy. How many million words of an average car owner's conversation would you have to report to give a visitor from 1700 an idea of internal combustion engines? The author, if skillful, can convey that information in other ways. Yet a lot of stories printed have long, stilted conversations in which the author thinks he is conveying in an entertaining way his foundation situation. Personally, I like a lot of physical action, violent action preferred. This is so probably because I'm a school teacher and sedentary in my habits. I have never written a story in my life, but I'm the most voracious consumer of stories in Chicago. I like to see the hero get into a devil of a pickle and to have him smash his way out. I like him big, tough, and kind to their grandmothers. It seems to me that interplanetary stories offer the best vehicle for all the desirable qualities herein enumerated combined. There is absolutely no restraint on the imagination, except a few known astronomical facts, plenty of opportunity for violent and dangerous adventures, strange and terrestrially impossible monsters. The human actors set down in the midst of such terrifying conditions, which they battle dauntlessly, grinning as they take their blows and returning them with good will, cannot fail to rouse the admiration of the reader, and make him buy the next month's issue. But spare us, please, the stories in which the hero, arriving on some other planet, is admitted to the court of the king of the white race, and leads their battles against the reds, the browns, the greens, and so on, eventually marrying the king's daughter, who is always golden-haired, of milky-white complexion, and has large blue eyes. Kindly reject stories of interplanetary travel in which a member of the party turns against the earth party and allies himself with the worm-like moon men, or what have you. Stories in which a great inventor gone crazy threatens to hurl the earth into the sun leave me cold and despondent, for the simple reason that crazy men are never great inventors. Name a great inventor who wasn't perfectly sane, if you can. The author makes the great inventor insane to make it plausible that he should want to destroy the world. Well, if he is a good author, he can find some other motive. One more thing. I like to smell, feel, hear, and even taste the action of a story as well as see it. Some authors only let you see it, and then they don't tell you whether it's in bright or subdued light. The author of Tanks fulfills my requirements in this respect, at least partially. Walter Boyle, care of Mrs. Anna Trites, 4751 North Artesian, Chicago, Illinois, a permanent reader, dear editor, 
I want to thank you for the very entertaining hours I spent perusing your new magazine, Astounding Stories. I read one or two other science fiction magazines. It seems that tales of this sort intrigue me. However, I wish to say that the debut number of your magazine contained the best stories I ever read. Again, thanking you and assuring you that should the stories continue thus, I will be a permanent reader. Irving E. Ettinger, The Seville, Detroit, Michigan We're avoiding reprints. Dear Editor, I am well pleased with your new magazine and wish to offer you my congratulations and best wishes. I am well acquainted with most of the science fiction now being written. I am in a good position to criticize your magazine. First, the cover illustration is good, but the inside drawings could be greatly improved. Second, holding the magazine together with two staples is a good idea. Third, the paper could be improved. Fourth, the price is right. Here I classify the stories. Excellent, The Beetle Horde, and Tanks. Very good, Cave of Horror, Invisible Death, and Phantoms of Reality. Medium, Compensation. Poor, Stolen Mind. Please don't reprint any of Poe's, Wells, or Verne's works. My prejudice to Verne, Wells, and Poe is that I have read all their works in other magazines. However, with all my criticizing, I think that your magazine is a good one. James Nichols, 1509 19th Street, Bakersfield, California. Thanks, Mr. Marks. Dear Editor, I purchased a copy of Our New Magazine today, and I think it excellent. I am glad to see most of my old author friends contributing for it, but how about looking up E. R. Burroughs, David H. Keller, M.D., C. P. Wantenbacker, and A. Merritt. They are marvelous writers. I see Wesso did your cover, and it is very good. I have been a reader of four other science fiction monthly magazines and two quarterlies, but I gladly take this one into my fold, and I think I speak for every other science fiction lover when I say this, which means, if true, that your publication will have everlasting success. Here's hoping. P. O. Marx, Jr., 893 York Avenue, Southwest, Atlanta, Georgia. A Fine Letter Dear Editor, Having read through the first number of Astounding Stories, my enthusiasm has reached such a pitch that I find it difficult to express myself adequately. A mere letter such as this can give scarcely an inkling of the unbounded enjoyment I derive from the pages of this unique magazine. To use a trite but appropriate phrase, it fills a long-felt need. True, there are other magazines which specialize in science fiction, but to my mind they are not in a class with astounding stories. In most of them the scientific element is so emphasized that it completely overshadows all else. In this magazine, happily, such is not the case. Here we find science subordinated to human interest, which is as it should be. The love element, too, is present and by no means unwelcome. As for the literary quality of the stories, it could not be improved on. Such craftsmen as Cummings, Leinster, and Rousseau never fail to turn out a vivid, well-written tale. If the stories in the succeeding issues are on par with those in the first, the success of the magazine is assured. By the way, your editorial explanation of Astounding Stories was a gem. So many of us take our marvelous modern inventions for granted that we never consider how miraculous they would seem to our forebears. As you say, the only real difference between the astounding and the commonplace is time. A magazine such as Astounding Stories enables us to anticipate the wonders of tomorrow. Through its pages we can peer into the vistas of the future and behold the world that is to be. Truly you have given us a rare treat. Alan Glasser, 931 Forest Avenue, New York, New York. The Science Correspondence Club Broadcasts Dear Editor, The other day I came upon astounding stories on our local newsstand. 
I immediately procured a copy because science fiction is my favorite pastime, so to speak. I was very much overjoyed that another good science fiction magazine should come out, and a Clayton magazine, too, which enhances its splendid value still further. I have read various members of the Clayton family, and I found each of them entertaining. After finishing the first issue, I decided to write in and express my feelings. The stories were all good, with the exception of The Stolen Mind. Just keep printing stories by Cape, Meek, Ray Cummings, Murray Leinster, C. V. Trench, Harl Vincent, and R. F. Starzl, and I can predict now that your new venture will be a huge success. The main reason of this letter is to ask your help in putting over Science Fiction Week. This will take place in the early part of February, the week of the 5th or after. We want your cooperation in making this a big success. You can help by running the attached article upon the Science Correspondence Club in your Reader's Corner. It will be a big aid. I am sure, because you are the editor of Astounding Stories, that you will be pleased to help us in this venture. Science fiction is our common meeting ground and our common ideal. I hope to have a big science fiction week with your help. Conrad H. Rupert, 113 North Superior Street, Angola, Indiana. To the Readers of Astounding Stories At the present there exists in the United States an organization the purpose of which is to spread the gospel of science and science fiction, the Science Correspondence Club. I am writing this to induce the readers of Astounding Stories to join us. After reading this, pick up your pen or take the cover from your typewriter and send in an application for membership to our secretary, Raymond A. Palmer, 1431 38th Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or to President Aubrey Clements, 6 South Hilliard Street, Montgomery, Alabama. They will forward application blanks to you, and you will belong to the only organization in the world that is like it. The club was formed by 20 young men from all over the U.S. We have a role of almost 100 all over the world. Its express purpose has been to help the cause of science fiction, and to increase the knowledge of science. It also affords the advantage of being able to express your ideas in all fields. The preamble of the Constitution which we have worked out reads, We the members of this organization, in order to promote the advancement of science in general among laymen of the world, through the use of discussion and the creation and exchange of new ideas, do ordain and establish this organization for the Science Correspondence Club. Article 2 reads, the institution will remain an organization to establish better coordination between the scientifically inclined laymen of the world, regardless of sex, creed, color, or race. There will be no restrictions as to age, providing the member can pass an examination which shall be prepared by the membership committee. The club will also publish a monthly bulletin to which members may contribute. It will also publish clippings, articles, etc., dealing with science. The membership will have no definite limit, and the correspondence will be governed by the wishes of each member. Need more be said? I almost forgot to say that we have two of the best science fiction authors as active members, and three more who are doing their best, but because of such work they cannot be active. I hope my appeal bears fruit and that we shall hear from you soon. Conrad H. Rupert but most everybody prefers the smaller size and price, dear editor. Last night I was passing a newsstand and saw your magazine. I bought it then and there. I do not read any other stories except the fantastic stories. Astounding stories looks all right, but may I make a suggestion? Why not increase the size of the magazine to that of Miss 1900 or Forest and Stream? It would certainly look better. You could also raise your price to 25 cents. Please print as many stories as possible by the following authors. Ray Cummings, Edgar Rice Burroughs, Murray Leinster, Edmund Hamilton, A. Hyatt Verrill, Stanton A. Koblenz, Ed Earl Rep, and Harold Vincent. My favorite type of story is the interplanetary one. I wish you the best of luck in your new venture. Stephen Tackett's 
303 Eckford Street, Brooklyn, New York. First Copy Wonderful, Dear Editor. I have read the first copy of Astounding Stories and think it wonderful. I am very much interested in science fiction. I prefer interplanetary stories and would like to see many of them in the new magazine. Your authors are fine. The ones I like particularly are Ray Cummings, Captain S. P. Meek, and Murray Leinster. I wonder if I could subscribe to Astounding Stories. Will you let me know? Good luck to the new magazine. Donald Seisler, 3111 Adams Mill Road, Washington, D.C. Congratulations, dear editor. Allow me to congratulate you upon the starting of your new magazine, Astounding Stories. Have just finished reading the first issue, and it is fine. While the class of stories that you publish do not appeal to all, I feel quite sure that there are many like myself who will welcome your publication and wish it all success. R. E. Norton, Post Office Box 226, Ashtabula, Ohio. End of Section 14 End of Astounding Stories, April 4, 1930